There are certain video game characters that, for whatever reason, you want to impress. Maybe it's because the character is well written, maybe it's because the character is a great A badass, but it's probably because the character is a cute girl. Whatever the reason, you find yourself doing whatever it takes to get them to like you, and this motivation helps drive you through the game. So here are the top 10 video game characters I tried to impress. The Walking Dead. There are loads of characters you want to impress in this game. Like this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, not this guy, this guy, and this guy. However, the character I tried to impress most was Carly. Between constantly saving Lee from certain death and her willingness to keep a secret, I began to respect her very quickly. Sure, she doesn't know how to put batteries in a radio correctly, but to her credit, the instructions are pretty confusing. She would be one of the first people I offered food to and my most reliable source for advice. I know a lot of people would put Clementine here instead, but that wasn't my experience. While I made most of my decisions in Clem's best interest, those decisions were made to keep her safe, not to have her like me. Carly is a character that players wanted to do good by, and that is evident by this. <laughs> Despite Doug having a sweet polar moose sweater, 76% of players saved Carly instead. Why? She's a cute girl that's nice to you. Do the math. This next one is a little obscure, but I know every fan of the Super Smash Bros. series has experienced it. Every match is accompanied with an audience who cheer, gasp, and applaud throughout the battle. They cheer when you knock someone off the edge, they cheer when you win a match, they even cheer when you pick a level. Honestly, other than the gameplay, the music, the characters, the tech controls, the levels, the items, the menus, and the camera functions, having the audience is the best part of Super Smash Bros. And when you're extremely talented or playing against three level one computers to boost your self-esteem, the audience will chant your character's name when you play well enough. While it may seem small, every player would be lying if they said it didn't bring a little smile to their face when it happened to them. Harvest Moon is a game about starting your life work in the fields, taking care of livestock, and of course, meeting girls. There's the farmer's daughter who knows a lot about raising animals, the bakery girl who makes delicious cakes, the bookworm who doesn't seem attractive but when she takes off her glasses you realize that she was actually beautiful all along and you should never judge a book by its cover, and the pink haired flower girl. But who cares about them because the right choice was Karen. The great thing about Karen is how much she respects her family. Okay, well, at least she doesn't get upset that much. Well, I mean, she's nice. All right, it's because she's easy. Here are the three steps to get Karen. One, get grapes. Two, equip grapes. Three, give grapes. That's it. All you need to do. It's easy. A big part of what you do in Animal Crossing is getting villagers to like you. In my attempts to do this, I realized I did things for them that I would probably never do for my real friends. Run errands, do their yard work, write them letters, ask them how they're doing, you know, the type of stuff that if you did for your real friends, you wouldn't be given a cool t-shirt for doing, so that's the point. It's the only game that made me feel guilty for not playing extended periods of time. The townsfolk know exactly how long I've been gone, which makes it seem like they really care. I mean, it's pretty clear that they're obsessed with me. In the end, I wanted to impress the townsfolk in Animal Crossing because there wasn't much of a game without it. I mean, there's not really much of a game with it either, but whatever. While some players certainly preferred Eris, throughout my many playthroughs of Final Fantasy VII, I always tried to impress Tifa. For some reason, I made Cloud chronically lie about Tifa being his girlfriend. Maybe it's because of the sweetness of their childhood friendship, maybe it's because she's a badass who fights with her fists, or maybe it's because she could change clothes just by spinning. While the timing is never right, their relationship feels destined. Making Cloud seem cool in front of her becomes a must throughout the game. Also, on a personal level, I played this game way before I ever started talking to girls, so it gave me some much needed practice in flirting. I know how to do this one. Yeah, give me something hard. Uh, wait. I mean, I'll give you something hard? This one is a little different than the others. I like Sam the whole way through Dishonored, but I didn't want to impress him until the very end. On the way to the final mission, he laid this one on me. And you. I'm a little disappointed, Corvo. It's like you've gone out of your way to be brutal. It's been interesting traveling with you, but this is the last time you'll see me, sir. Goodbye. There's an ending where Sam is even more upset with you, but for me, hearing that he was disappointed felt worse. Traveling with Sam, I had grown to respect him, but I never thought about how he viewed me. When I realized this was it, I felt so terrible that I went back to play the game with as little chaos as possible in the hopes that he might respect me. Okay. 
Hey, the song, 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 the B doesn't have to be different than A. A is good enough to also be B. Tetra is anything but a proper lady, and this is what makes her so compelling. Other versions of Zelda are solely interested in protecting the kingdom, while Tetra's main interest is whatever she damn well pleases. To me, this makes the good things she does have more of an impact. While well, one of my main motivations was to save my sister, I also wanted to show Tetra how much Link was worth. At the start of the game, she views him the way I viewed the Burger Kid. I wanted to prove that Link was less like this, and more like this. I mean this! Yeah! Ellie is one of the most well-written and interesting characters in all of storytelling. The first time you meet, Joel doesn't seem to care for her much, however, it was already obvious that they would end up growing close. I started the game viewing Ellie as a peer, but as I progressed, I felt more and more like her caretaker. Whenever we walked past a mound of bodies, I hoped she would look away. Whenever she asked for a gun, I felt conflicted about what would keep her safer. And whenever I strangled some gangbang motherfuckers, I tried to make sure she thought I was just putting them down for a nap. I did these things because I cared about how she viewed Joel and the world around her. I wanted to make sure she viewed Joel as a friend and not a monster. Falco might be the most popular character in the Star Fox franchise. Why? I mean, look at him! He's a Banff! In fact, when you look up Banff in the dictionary, there's nothing there because Banff isn't actually a word, but if it were, there'd be a picture of Falco about to shake hands with Bruce Lee while Gregory Rasputin stands by idly watching. Falco spends a lot of his time shitting on Fox. Gee, I've been saved by Fox! How swell! You worry about your own hide! I guess I should be thankful! You are so lucky, Fox! Even when he's being nice, he comes off as a dick. Pretty smooth flying, Fox. Despite this, it's hard not to respect him. He has a lot of confidence and holds himself well, and all of his insults really made me want to prove that Fox had just as much skill as him. I felt proud when I beat Andros and finally heard, Okay, I'll admit it. You did good, Fox. Yeah, you better admit it, you blue feather buck. I mean, who else could it have been? While everyone has their own opinions about Bioshock Infinite, it is undisputed that there is something special about Elizabeth. I think I speak for everyone who finished the game when I say I wish we could have just stayed here. When you're with Elizabeth, you feel a range of emotions. Watching her interact with the world and see things for the first time is exciting, while the moment she looks at Booker like he's a monster feel terrible. Along with Ellie, Elizabeth is the closest a video game character has come to being a real person. Her feelings seem legitimate, so it's hard not to take her seriously. She's caring and smart, which makes her so likable. Pretty early on, I wanted to do whatever I could to get her to Paris, and and I got mad at Booker until he felt the same way. Elizabeth is the number one character I tried to impress because she is the character that impressed me the most. Thanks for watching. Please let me know in the comments which characters you tried to impress. Were they the same as mine? They fucking better be. If you like this video, do the obvious thing and click like. Also, subscribe. This is the first of hopefully a million videos. A million? Does that seem realistic? A million videos, so do it. Do, do it now and save yourself the trouble of doing it later? THANKS!